Hi, Tom. Good to be back. So today, I uh, understand we're talking about uh, package diagrams inside Enterprise Architect. Yeah, that's right, Tom. It is a structural diagram and a really important diagram to get an overview um, of the structure of your uh, your repository. So. Uh, and as always, the first thing we need to do is to uh, set the perspective. I've been, this morning, I've been working on some mind mapping diagrams, and my perspective is at the moment set to mind mapping, but I'm gonna change that uh, to UML, and uh, I'll go here for the structural diagrams in uh, UML. And notice that uh, the class diagram, the package diagram uh, pop up there, and um, let's have a look at creating one. And of course, as always, again, we create a package for that in the project browser. We'll call it the package model. So we've uh, we've got that um, got that package ready to go. Let's create a diagram, and uh, it's a package diagram. We'll just call it package model for the moment. So and Stephen, I, I noticed on the uh, when you created the package, there was um, options there for for creating diagrams as well. Um, can you sort of give me any commentary on, you know, creating a package first and then picking your diagram afterwards? Or is it um, better just to accept the, the diagram from the package or? When yeah. I, you, you mean when I was creating um, the diagram there or? Uh, the, the package actually, I noticed just on the pop-up there, there was a little option, uh, like a radio button option. Okay, when I created the package. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's do it. Let's put another package in, uh, Tom, and have a look at that. I'll, um, I'll just, um, create another package uh, there. And uh, yeah, we have this thing of select and apply the model pattern, create the diagram and uh, the package only. So from the top, it's talking about who the owner is and that's the package that contains uh, contains the package that we're about to put in. And then we've got this other group here where we've got select and apply model patterns, create diagram and package only. So if you choose um, create diagram, that will automatically create a package diagram under the package that you're doing. And for many purposes, uh, that's a great uh, that's a great setting. Um, the other one is to apply a model pattern. So Enterprise Architect has a very rich, um, a rich corpus a body of patterns, which are already kind of um, constructed models that will help you uh, start with your work. So that's something that we'd look at in another video. Um, but one of the one of the issues with uh, creating a diagram every time you create a package is that sometimes uh, when modelers just uh, had that option set, uh, they create a lot of uh, packages and you know diagrams get uh, created underneath, and then they you know don't go then and put elements on the uh, diagram. So you end up with all these kind of empty diagrams. So I I tend to go for uh, this option here, but either one of them uh, works works well. In my case, then I could have uh, just done that um, package only one. Let's just, let's just delete that um, package for the moment and, um, and redo it with that option on. So I'll delete that package. There's nothing in there at the moment, no harm done. And we'll, we'll say, let's create another package here and let's call it, um, again, our package model, but let's have create diagram as well. And so we'll put that on and um, we've got this option now to um, put that diagram uh, straight in with that dialogue there. Yeah, right. I remember when we did the requirements model where we actually created the requirements directly into the package without a diagram. So yeah, it was just interesting to see the, the difference between both and, and what sort of options that, that were available there. Yeah, Tom, that's one of the real real strengths of the tool is that there uh, people work in different ways when they're modeling and the tool uh, has many different ways of doing things. All of them will result in the same output, the same model, but you know, people work in, in different ways. So uh, the tool is very flexible uh, and meets the, the needs of um, different, you know, modelers with different ways of working. Um, let's uh, let's have a look at this now. And we've already got some, uh, some models in here. Uh, so let's just drag a package from, uh, from the project browser. So just to reiterate this, and it's an important point, you can create new packages by dragging them from the toolbox onto the diagram canvas, and that will be a new package. But you also have the option of dragging on existing packages, and that applies to any modeling that you're doing. And as a general rule, uh, a lot of novice modelers tend to uh, just use the toolbox and drag things on, but a more experienced, uh, intermediate experienced modeler will often go to the repository and look for content that already exists and drag that content on 
uh, to the diagram and you know they're connecting up existing things. Let's have a look at that. We did a class diagram in an earlier uh, video. Feel free to go back and look at that at any uh, point, but the class model had a number of elements in it. I'll just bring up that diagram so people can uh, see that. It, uh, it contains things like a parking meter, a parking session, a motorist, a vehicle, the kind of entities you would expect to find in a parking meter system. But let's, we're, we're focusing on packages at the moment. So let's drag this uh, package on, the class model. Now I can drag it on as a, uh, a number of different, uh, different representations or visualizations. So let's just choose this one and we'll come back and circle back and look at these in a minute. But I'm gonna choose a package element. Now, notice the, the EA very conveniently uh, lists the contents of that uh, package on the diagram. Now that's very uh, powerful. If I don't want that to be displayed, I can go to the compartments uh, panel of the properties window and turn off uh, the checkbox or uncheck the box package contents. And that then just displays the package. And there may be times when, you know, people will want uh, just to display uh, that package. So uh, that's always an option. And I'm going to turn that back on again now. Actually, what I'll do is I'll leave it off for a minute and I'll drag some other things on uh, to the diagram. I want to drag the class instance model on as well. So we, um, we or, or the, this uh, uh, class test data model, it, it's called. So earlier, earlier again, we uh, looked at creating instance diagrams and instances of our classes to represent the test data that would be useful while people are developing or talking to their users about um, various scenarios. So let's have a look at uh, one of those things very quickly uh, so you understand. Uh, here we have, we've got test data or data representing an actual uh, person. So uh, Jenny Thornton Smith is a motorist. Um, Jenny's driving a vehicle PQR123 is the registration number. She had a parking session from start time of 2.35 to 4.45. Um, she had a payment of $7 parking meter. So that information was there. Let's just close that uh, for the moment. And we, again, we're interested at the package level. So let's just drag that, um, that package on there as well. So we'll put that on there and we'll say package element. Now we might just wanna uh, connect these, uh, these up uh, and, and, and show the relationship between them. Now there are a number of relationships here in the toolbox. But they are a more advanced uh, semantic modeling, the connection between packages. So we're going to do something uh, a little bit more, um, a little bit more basic today and show uh, the use of a trace uh, element between uh, this class data and the class model because they were created uh, from each other. So we'll put a trace in there, which says that they're related to each other in some ways. Now, again, I can turn on the compartments again and show the package uh, contents there. Um, I'm going to turn it off again for a moment. And what I want to do is I want to put in to this uh, element, I want to put the uh, the actual test data that I'm using. So I'll just, again, I'm using these uh, lineup facilities here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag test data one um, from the project browser, drop it on, and I'm going to choose the other one and drop that on as well. So. Uh, you know, I've got the compartments uh, turned off now. Now, if I um, turn them back on again, we'll see what uh, what what happens. I have to select the diagram, go to the compartments panel of the properties window and choose package contents. So in this case, you can see that because I've dropped those two elements in and I've got package contents in, the test data pops up with the values, which is, you know, quite handy. So Jenny Thornton Smith's there and um, Enrico uh, Kitabashi is there and you can see these particular uh, particular scenarios of uh, long sessions and, and long names there. So uh, I'm going to uh, just expand that window a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that package contents off. Uh, I don't want uh, the class test data to display uh, the little package icons, the yellow icons that are at the top there. So I'm going to turn it off for a minute. And what I'm going to do is say, I'm going to select, multi-select uh, a number of these elements these package elements. And I'm gonna use this facility here, which is called compartment visibility. So we had compartment visibility at the entire diagram level, but we also have the ability to more finely, do a more finely grained uh, visibility by choosing compartment visibility for the diagram elements. And in this case, I could do it for just one element, but I actually want it done for multiple. So I have multiple select 
those. And I'm gonna turn package contents on for those uh, elements. And you'll see that um, that has displayed the contents of the, of the packages that I selected. And it is uh, also um, uh, put the, uh, the contents of each one of these packages on the diagram. So be lots really of things handy going for, there. Yeah, really handy for showing just the specific data that you need for that particular diagram. Yeah, and um, you can also see, Tom, underneath uh, this, uh, underneath each one of the elements, uh, there's a little, um, there's a little, little uh, text in brackets, and that's showing um, the package where uh, these things uh, live. So the class model lives in the parking meter system package, and the um, the class test data model lives in the class uh, test data, or the, or the test data zero one long sessions lives in the um, class test data model. Now. Earlier on, when I dragged the package on, uh, I showed you that there were a number of uh, options uh, there. And uh, what I want to do now is drag uh, another uh, package onto the uh, diagram. So again, we can just keep adding packages. I'm going to close some of these things down in my uh, project browser. Uh, I'm going to look at these requirements uh, diagram. Now we, we again in a previous video, and please take the time, uh, you know, to go back and look at this requirements uh, video if you haven't seen it. But we had a a requirements model and it had we created a diagram there as well so there's a number of different uh, parts of our requirements just showing you that so you know what's uh, what we're uh, what we're doing and I'm going to drag that requirements model uh, onto the uh, diagram and I'm going to say now um, I want it to be a package as a list right and uh, what's popped up onto my other monitor and I'll drag that onto the screen is uh, Enterprise Architect has um, created uh, a SQL uh, statement that you, you don't actually need to, to touch, it's just there. The advantage of it is that if you do need to adjust what's in the list, you can do that. All I have to do simply there is um, press OK and um, I've got my um, requirements uh, model into uh, the diagram. And this, is, uh, this is incredibly uh, powerful. So there we have a list of the, uh, the requirements. And this is a different... Um, slightly different display, obviously, than the previous ones. The other ones are the package, and they had the elements listed uh, vertically in the um, uh, inside the package. But this is, again, listing them vertically, but I've got other metadata uh, that's on that, uh, on, on that list. And I can go in, uh, Tom, and change uh, this if I'm, you know, if you're, if you're familiar with SQL and know um, what you're doing, I can go in here and, you know, add uh, something else. I might want to. I might want to um, put in the author of the um, of the particular requirement. So I can use this uh, as a special uh, feature in here. You can go dot there. It brings up the author for me. I just choose that author, and uh, and I can uh, put that in. And now you can see that the author, which happens to be me, because I'm the one that created uh, the model. And uh, so that's a very useful thing. Down the bottom, it's saying showing um, one of seven to eight items. So it's telling you. Um, you know, you don't have to list them all. If there were hundreds in there, um, you can list them like that. But that's a, another very powerful um, feature. And I'm going to trace that to, um, I'm just going to trace that uh, to the, or make a dependency on this model here as well, because um, it, it, it's referencing some of the, um, some of the elements that are inside our class model. Remember our class model is sort of a, a very fundamental model that is uh, describing the entities in the system. And of course the requirements we'll talk about um, some of those elements, like it'll talk about the motorists, it'll talk about the parking sessions. So um, yeah, that's a uh, that's a look at that, but we've got something else to look at as well, Tom. So the other thing I can do, one of the other um, one of the other um, options that came up uh, was the ability uh, to um, to drag a package on, or then we'll use the requirements one. I'm going to choose a, a graph based on package contents. All right. So um, again, a dialog pops up, uh, and again, you don't need to do anything here uh, initially. The only thing I will do is say include uh, child packages, uh, because if we had those nested, um, then you know, we would we uh, we might need to do that. So that's a sensible thing to do. Hit OK on that, um, and um, we've got uh, this diagram, uh, this graph that pie chart that pops up automatically driven from the data that uh, has been, has been uh, assigned to our 
requirements. So that's that's showing the status uh, of those uh, of those requirements. So we have a status of approved, implemented, proposed, uh, and validated. And if we go and look at some of the requirements and look at the property sheet on those, you'll be able to see um, those uh, those statuses. Uh, so Stephen, on... yeah, is is that just a, a, a static picture now, or or is that going to um, change if my model changes? Yeah, great question, Tom. Uh, yes, it will change when the model changes, and that's the that's the really great thing about this. And I guess the message that I'm always trying to convey in these videos is that Enterprise Architect is a very simple tool to use. You saw how quickly it, quick it was for me just to drag that on, but it's sophisticated because it isn't just a drawing, it is connected to the underlying model. So all of these representations are all gonna change. Let's, uh, let's do that. Let's look at this um, display panel over here, and you can see that the um, you can see that the status is proposed. Let's change that status uh, to, uh, let's go validated there. So we've changed that status. Now, I've got the diagram displayed there and it's not it's not reflecting it at the moment. It was proposed at 50%, validated 25. Let's use the right mouse click uh, and look at refreshing the chart. And you can see immediately uh, that the proposed has gone down to 37.5 and validated has gone up to 37.5 as well. So we could change. Does that, does, that, does that mean if I have a, a diagram, say, with 10 of these things on, I might, I might have built like a, a dashboard or something? Uh, does that mean I have to refresh each one of these manually then? No, no, you can you can actually just uh, refresh the diagram as well, Tom. From the uh, package up here, I can reload um, this uh, diagram and that will automatically change them. So I'm assuming like when I open the diagram, then it'll do the same thing as well? That's right, yeah. The, the, the diagram opening, you can appreciate that uh, you know, someone, while they've changed it, someone may not want that to be uh, changed straight away. So there is that option to, um, that I did with the right mouse click. But when someone's opening the diagram for the first time, um, that will um, display uh, the true, you know, the, the, the true updated contents. So um, that's, that uh, is incredibly uh, powerful. And, you know, it's, um, there are all sorts of other, uh, you know, things that I can, uh, other type of charts, like you said, we can create dashboards. That is the uh, probably the, the good idea for another uh, another session. The dashboards in Enterprise Architect, the charts and graphs are extremely powerful. And uh, you know, it's always good to get that view. And of course, if you really wanna go and, 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 and use dashboards to get very, very powerful views, uh, the tool Prolaborate uh, has even more sophisticated uh, more, more sophisticated views. But these- That's like these a, like a web-based tool, isn't it, Prolaborate? Yeah, it's, it is. I, um, I think about it as a, as a visualization uh, tool and it, yeah, it's web-based um, and it allows you to look at the uh, repository in all sorts of uh, different visualizations. For people that you know, aren't interested in diagrams at all, um, they could use Prolaborate, uh, interact with the model, enter into discussions and reviews uh, and, um, uh, and create visualizations uh, with, with sophisticated dashboards. And they don't even need to know that um, that there are diagrams behind this. They can view the diagrams if they want to in, in dashboards, but they may choose not to. So um, that's another very powerful tool. And again, Tom, it uh, it might be the subject of uh, another uh, video. Absolutely. No, it sounds good. Uh, there's probably uh, videos uh, out there already for, for those people who'd like to explore now just on our, on our channel, but uh, we'll, we'll definitely uh, touch base in this series as well. Yeah. All right, thank you, Tom. Cool, well, thanks very much for showing us that, Stephen. Um, yeah, really amazing sort of ways you can visualize the, the, the different information within, within Enterprise Architect. Like we, we didn't create anything today, we just reused uh, the, the stuff we had there. Um, so starting to, to really get some of the value out of, of, of the model um, without any extra work. So I really appreciate your time there. For all those who are following along in the series, please, uh, like the videos, um, hit subscribe so you get notified when our next video comes out uh, and, and leave the comments. Uh, we're we're going to be very active in, in answering questions in the comments, uh, as you can see already with the, the videos that have been out there. Um, so yeah, re really appreciate your time. Stephen, thank you very much again. It was great having you along. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it.